Hello viewers, SuperGT here. Now, welcome to Forza Crash Simulator 7, whatever you want to call it. We're going for a race around Bathurst, to give it its proper name. So into turn one, typically a chaotic corner, get a bit of a bump from behind and a bit of a bump from the side, while we all progress nicely. So you can see there, it could definitely happen. You can get through that corner without half the grid getting killed or turning upside down. Now coming through here over the crest, BMW is just going to turn across for no reason. Yep. And we get pretty much full terminal damage. I think a couple of people got collected as well. So yeah, good stuff. This absolute idiot. Just look at him as he drives off. What a twat. Anyway, we're going to move on to a race around Le Mans. Now I'm only going to show you the beginning because it was just a cool start and then the rest of the race, well, wasn't really worth watching but anyway here we go then seventh position through Dunlop curve well Super GT effects um, is on point today seventh straight into first kind of nearly overshot the first corner but just about get it done there we go nice stuff now we're going to move to Suzuka in the rain the Minecraft character look at him he's geared up he is ready he's on it he, he wants to get straight into the action here so let's do it, shall we? we nine laps around Suzuka in the rain, trying to avoid this uh, Nissan who doesn't move. There's a massive puddle which kind of catches me out. I slide across the circuit quite dangerously, and luckily only this one guy kind of has to break to avoid any contact. So a bad start down to 14th position, but this is the Forza Enduro, Enduro GT Hopper, as we've got plenty of uh, uh, cars straight across the circuit here. So having to slow down to make our way through up now to 10th. So the Enduro Hopper race is typically lasting around 20 minutes, sometimes a bit longer, sometimes a bit shorter. But the key thing here is that we have time. Time is on our hands here. We can uh, get sort of settled down into the race and make our progress up the order so these two guys having a bit of a tangle through Dunlop curve and then I immediately catch back up to them and we'll try to get past them as quick as we can. I'm driving the Jaguar which from what I can tell is one of the very strong cars in this division. I haven't really driven it much before though so I'm really driving it one of my first times not really experienced with this vehicle uh, tuned by TX3 Lightning, so uh, an absolutely experienced driver on the game, very very quick indeed. Uh, we're going to give it a go, see how it goes. And you see it definitely got a speed advantage over the Nissan uh, on the way round to Spoon. And Pack is going to sort of bunch up here. The Audi comes back on the track with a horrible rejoin. Smashed that guy wide for no reason and they're going to make contact. Oh, sort of bumped the Nissan a little bit there. And well, that uh, didn't end well for those guys. Moving up to eight. Now we've got a Jaguar covered the inside. He's going to go to the outside. So I should just be just about be able to keep the position. I have to go in narrow though. He might be able to get a car back on me. Make we make contact. I serve the inside line then for the final chicane. He went for a cut back there. I see him just swing across to the right. I just covered the inside. There's no way he's going to get through. Jaguar recovering. Sorry, uh, Corvette recovering from the grass so that is another position so although going down to 14 at the beginning uh, that wasn't really too bad because well we're already back up to 7th uh, with the gap around about one and a half thousand feet now to the lead as the BMW goes very wide easy to do that really easy to do that now around here Suzuka we've seen on Gran Turismo uh, the AstroTurf loves to suck you off but um, Forza isn't quite as horny, so it doesn't quite have the same level of appreciation for you. It doesn't actually really do that to you. So if you do go off, it's normally at your own accord. So don't have to worry about that too much. And the main corners that affects you is Spoon and Turn 1 slash Tank, Turn 2, like the entry to Turn 2. That's where the AstroTurf is and that's where it can ruin your life and your marriage if, it, if you get sucked off far too often. But that is only on Gran Turismo. On here it doesn't really make too much of a difference. So, you know, go over that AstroTurf as much as you like. 
into the hairpin, catching up with an Aston Martin GT3. So he's gonna have a hard time. I did actually, I think I did a video around Suzuka in that very car not too long ago, and I found it very difficult. Uh, the car very, very leery on throttle. Uh, slides about a lot, and I'm just about up the inside. Quite a hairy moment, bit of contact in the rear, and I'm just about through up into fifth. So the very, very wet conditions here at Suzuka. Of course, if, if this was real life, I don't think we'd be racing. And this is where you'd have the F1 drivers on the on the radio, you know, saying, "Oh, I think we should stop the race. I don't, I don't really want to race because it's going to get a little bit wet." But um, to be honest, if it was this wet, then they probably wouldn't have a race. So this guy's recovering up to fourth. Uh, just far too much standing water, basically. You've got puddles just sitting there on the apex. And I think that is actually way too dangerous for real life racing. So up to fourth, and into lap two. We've still got seven laps remaining, and that's a fairly decent recovery thus far. We'll fast forward briefly down the main straight. As we go into turn one, try not to get sucked off. And we don't. Good stuff. So, this is an important lap, I think. We've got uh, three guys still ahead of us. I do sense that I'm gaining on the leader. And we do still have, as I say, seven laps remaining. So, you can never write that off. You could still win the race, even from this far back. It's not impossible. But the Jaguar here is a very strong car. And from what I can tell, I have a speed advantage on the straight. And this, this track... Although we associate it with lots of corners, it does have a lot of corners, it does still have lots of straight line sections where you can get out the speed before, uh, before spoon curve, after spoon curve, and the main straight. So you've, you've still got these long, fairly long sections where top speed definitely does matter. And we're coming up to that section now. So go through the hairpin. You see the two guys just ahead of us there, not too far ahead. And then from here, until the first corner pretty much is mostly about top end and acceleration so you have this long winding bend on the way around to spoon curve and acceleration and top speed does matter here although it's not the longest of the straight sections uh, trying to pick our braking zone here can be difficult because it is wet we don't know exactly where our braking zones are they are different than the dry of course and the weather will be changing presumably at some point it will get drier and drier so you do have to kind of adapt your braking zone if it does get drier you can brake a little bit later and it's, it's it is a skill to know exactly when to do that so coming up into the 130r again another straight line section where you can maximize the car's top end uh, the jaguar actually fairly planted through 130r although i'd imagine that other cars would do it better uh, namely the aston martin uh, dbr9 and well there's plenty of other cars that do a better job like the Nissan GTR, the Ford GT uh, but I don't think they'll match me at the top end only a few cars can do that in this division so down the main straight, tucked into the slipstream of the Corvette ahead and the pull out, look for the move, it's not quite on it's very easy, Just you, I mean, you could just lunge it but uh, as is the way many times on this game you just wait for people to make a mistake and then you can go through I didn't really lose much time there at all trying to get past that guy so immediately now onto the back of the uh, DBR9. So as I said, that should be a really good car in terms of handling. And Suzuka very much, well, I say very much, but it is a mix of handling and a mix of top end or acceleration. And so he's got to maximize his car through this section, basically, from the first corner to the hairpin, or until after the hairpin. Uh, this is where he, he can excel with the handling type car. And I'll presumably fall away until we get to the straight line sections. So through Degna 2, a bit of uh, standing water on the apex. So that can affect your line through there. So we've got a fast ball put entry into the hairpin. Going very narrow here, it doesn't actually really matter through here, through the hairpin. I'm going to pull away second gear. Actually really nice in the wet weather. Uh, really, kind of revs really low. Slow acceleration, but it helps because you can get the power down early. And... Uh, you don't really have to worry too much about uh, the, uh, the lack of traction control. The car won't really spin out on the way out. That is an advantage of this, this tune here by Lightning. So through the second apex of Spoon, you know, trying to get the up floor as early as possible. Got to watch out for the curves. They can be very, very dangerous, very treacherous in the rain. And now we're tucked in into the slipstream of the Aston Martin. 
you see just how much I'm gaining. Now, could have gone for the move. Not a good place to go for a move there, 130R. Would have been quite sketchy. And of course, you're still considering the long-term goals in the race. I do want to catch up with the leader. So if I, you know, if I cause a collision here and lose two seconds, that could be game over in terms of race win. So you have to pick your opportunities very well. And I thought I'd wait until this part here as this tyre balances absolutely miraculously on the back of this car. Top stuff by that tyre. 10 out of 10 for balance. Into the first corner. So I wasn't anywhere near close enough. So this is the thing. If a car might not have the, the top end, but as long as it can have some decent acceleration onto the straight, that is a good defensive mechanism because you can get far away. Uh, on the early half of the straight and then by the second half of the straight even though the other car is quicker you've, you know, you've accelerated away by that point so in fact that wasn't um, a good moment in the race as now for this first sector of uh, lap 5 the Astons have actually had a really good first sector and I've had quite a bad one so you can see that gap now actually opening back up so I did pretty much reel him right in but now it opens up to again a couple of seconds so the gap to the lead about a thousand feet as we as he's going to the heaven now and I'm still a couple of seconds away but uh, I mean that's just something we have to uh, kind of monitor and see how it goes it might be difficult to win the race you, know, you just never know though you know he could uh, come across a back marker who would punt him off or make him lose a second or he might just uh, get two wheels into a puddle and lose a couple of seconds. It's very easy to do that, very, very easy. Fortunately, he doesn't have to worry about the sucking off problem. You can see it just go, uh, go two wheels onto the Astro and it doesn't quite do do anything. Uh, so I think the there's actually definitely a different physics model in terms of the Astro Turf. Because on, um, I noticed on Grand Turismo, your, your wheels kind of spin up a little bit uh, where you go on the Astro Turf and you lose maybe 20% of power, but the car just doesn't want to move. As, as much as it normally would on the tarmac. Uh, whereas on this game, it doesn't it doesn't really affect you too much, especially the lighter green Astro Tab, which we've gone over there and uh, here, really doesn't really affect the car at all. So four laps are remaining on this race. Uh, 11 minutes gone so far, and the, the guy in second's kind of recovered here, had a really good lap. And we're gonna progress then to the end of lap number seven, coming out of Spoon Curve. See the situation is about the same. In fact, maybe through six and seven, lap six and seven, I've had a slightly better lap. But you can see there, my split time was was blue, which is uh, means I've gone quicker. But largely because of the fact that the uh, the rain is drying up, or well, the rain is not falling, should I say? The rain isn't fall isn't falling now, uh, but it is obviously still a wet track. It's just going to be drying out slightly, so. This is the time now where you can begin to uh, break slightly later into the corners and carry slightly more speed. He's gone, he's swerving everywhere as I go a second a lap quicker. Looking up the inside, but I just have to get on the brakes. I mean, I could just go for a lunge, but then I'm going to go wide and lose even more time. So we're going to play the long game here, play the smart game. Uh, uh, stay in third for now and then hope that I can uh, get, a, get a move done later on in the race. Now, of course, the uh, Forza Enduro Hopper, one mandatory pit stop. Uh, so we do have to go in. I haven't gone in yet. Uh, neither has first place, neither has second. So none of us are splitting our strategy here. We're all just going to go in exactly the same time at the end of this lap. And there will be just a one lap showdown at the end. So looking behind, the gap is fairly large. We don't really have to worry about that. It's pretty much a battle for second, possibly first. We see first just up the road he really isn't very far away I think we may have needed one or two more laps though to really reel him in unless he does make an error which could still happen he's been driving fairly well fairly consistently throughout the race so far as has second place and I suppose so have I it's been a fairly even race although the leader probably the slowest out of the top three here because he had a very good breakaway from the beginning of the race and really made the most of his early lap pace See him just at the uh, exit of Spoon Curve. So he really isn't very far away at all, but it might just be too far away from myself and the Spaniard here to, to really consider winning the race. So I'm going to really reel this guy in now on the entry to 130R. 
So tuck right into that slipstream again, but it's still not quite close enough to go for that move. We're getting frustratingly close, but just, just about not enough to get the job done. Into the chicane, and only one more time to go through here after this. So we have to swing to the right, very awkward pit entry. If you watch my recent live stream on Tuesday, then you'd know that I kind of smashed into that wall. So we're going to skip the pit, uh, pit animation, or lack of animation. And me just going through the pits with no pit crew, invisible pit crew, I guess. So here we go then. A one lap showdown, myself, Gas and Martin, and maybe the guy in first. I don't know what car he's driving, but he's not too far ahead. You can actually see the spray come off the front, or sorry, off the back of his car. Then he maybe two seconds ahead of uh, second place there. But really, my job here, I think, is just to get just to have a, as good a sector as I can, a good a lap as I can, and get, uh, give myself a run down to 130R or to the finish line. One of the two, and then I might have a chance of getting into second place, and then just hope that first place makes a mistake. I think that's going to be too much to ask for me to overhaul first place on pure pace. It's probably not going to happen. But coming into the hairpin, can we get close to the back of the Spaniard, we do get very close. That is about as close as I've been for a couple of laps. That bodes well. Now can we get even closer then on the run up to 130R? We're basically trying to engineer ourselves into a position where we can eventually overtake him. So you see now definitely hauling him in on the way to 130R, breaking a lot later than we were earlier in the race. Nowhere near as much spray uh, coming up from the cars as it was earlier in the race. So can definitely carry more speed through and it might be the crucial difference uh, one braking zone you break a little bit too early once then that could be the difference here he's actually going very defensive into 130r he definitely knows that i'm here again not quite close enough i'm gonna have to have a good run through here i mean he's had a bad run he's gonna go very wide so i'm gonna look around the outside into the chicane am i going to be able to carry it off no not quite he released the brake to stay ahead but i am in a really good position here to try to get a run onto the uh, finish line so just coming through the final corner I'm not sure which way to go I go left we make a bit of contact but I'm just about through with the superior uh, top end of the Jaguar and I get second place wow what a finish uh, the first place guy there did well to maintain his position he was driving the uh, BMW M3 but there we go guys I do hope you enjoyed the video as always so let me know your thoughts subscribe for more of the same and of course hit the like button if you enjoyed I shall see you next time thank you for watching goodbye